independent films have gotten a lot of ink over the last couple of years. Hundreds have been produced, dozens have been theatrically released. But have they gotten enough exposure and visibility? And more importantly, have you been able to see them? That's why we put together this list of the 10 best films that you probably have not been able to see. <laughs> I've never heard of any of them. I think I've heard of Man Bites Dog. No, I've never seen any of these. I've got a list here, actually, I'm going to show you of the of the films that we're showing in this program this year, the 10 best the ten best films that, that you that you should have seen. I think several of them when I look on the list were pictures that uh, companies had where they just said, ah, didn't work, next. And I think some of the other ones uh, simply didn't have the capital to, to get them distributed throughout the country. Some people have that theory in the way they distribute movies. Other people, if the movie bombs in New York and L.A., see you later, we'll, we'll send it to cable and uh, on video. No, Rhythm Thief I, I really liked, but I just thought, man, that's going to be tough. Rhythm Thief really was the film that was a turning point for me. With that film, I feel like I learned well and truly, and for the finally, for the last time, that it didn't matter whether a picture was good or bad for it to succeed in the marketplace. So much of it is about marketing. If you don't have a good marketing plan, and you don't have a good marketing budget for your picture, it doesn't matter how great the picture is. It's just not going to get seen. When I hear that the studio is spending like $50 million, I, I like have prejudice against the film almost at this point. Distributors are in it to, to make money, and obviously you can't blame them for that. Um, and they will play the films that they can get people to see. Well, anything with Bette Midler. So hard to interest not just audiences, but let's say, magazine editors, newspaper editors, and running stories on someone like Kurostami. Um, you just can't get a toehold in the market. You say, this is not a sexy guy. This is, you know, a guy, an Iranian guy with glasses. This is an Iranian film. How many people are going to go see a film in Farsi? Let's be honest here, guys. More than distributors, I, I, I blame the uh, concentration of, uh, of entertainment power among fewer and fewer uh, players. So they'd rather take all the money and put it into one big hundred million dollar film and have that on all the screens and that's all you can see, right? That week, that's the film. It'd be great if one of these theaters showed something a little more alternative. I mean, I turn down whatever I don't like. I mean, the other day I read an interview with some small independent theater owners who said, gee, anything Fine Line sends us or Miramax or any of those folks at Sony will take. Well, I think that's a, a foolish attitude. I don't want Film Forum to become a dumping ground for those films that are, are merely marginal and don't have the qualities that we're looking for that are exciting. It doesn't have to be an award winner to be a good film because a lot of films are not even recognized. You can look at probably eight out of ten of these and say that like they probably failed because they were released at a time where I think the market was saturated with like 14 other independent films that were just doing really well at the same time because these are all great, great movies. But there, there, and there are a couple of them that I think just the, probably the, the subject matter is just something that people would maybe not be interested in. Actually, no. I haven't seen any of them. Yeah, sometimes have as many as 15 films a week opening in New York. Ten years ago, that number was closer to five or six. And when you have this kind of Niagara Falls of product, it's inevitable that, that the theaters feel the pressure to remove a film that isn't grossing as well as, as another might be and bring on a new film. Hollywood to me is we want to make money. money. You know, yeah. They're just like, hey, let's sell, let's sell, let's sell. I think the industry's cruising for a bruising. I think there's going to be a shakeout. I think that there, you just cannot have this many films and this many little companies and expect success. I think you're going to see companies go bankrupt. I think you're just going to see them go out of business. I have a tendency to look for stuff that's maybe a little bit more easily marketable. You know? You know, I'm old and I'm tired. I can't. I can't you know, be slogging around these movies that I can't sell. It's just too hard. An independent, all of the films that I've made have my blood, my sweat, and my soul in them. And for them not to get sold and not to establish, you know, these first-time filmmakers and get their names out there and up in the world, and then, of course, you know, so that I can work with them on their second and third films, it's just too hard. There's a moment where you think, well, do I want, am I going to spend this year of my life just marketing and promoting my film? Am I going to try to also spend part of this year working on my new projects? So that's a trade. And uh, I tried to strike the best balance I could. It was important to me to continue. I didn't want to 
get into the business of uh, distributing movies. I'd like to believe that, you know, what I do, and if it gets into even a premier magazine, like a little box on River of Grass, because it's their independent pick of the week, you know, or the month, that would help a distributor or a theater owner say, I want to program that movie. I'd say the best way is to uh, put up all those posters on the side of, you know, construction sites. You know, you don't make a movie just to have it sit in your closet. You don't make a movie for no one to see. Um, only a snob, only an idiot would take that kind of route. And, you know, there are a lot of filmmakers who, who are snobs, who, who are idiots, who do take that route. Most people who make independent films, I think, are looking, you know, to get their ideas expressed. They're also looking to, you know, get their money back. Exactly. You know, I mean, that's, that's something they're in. And in fact, they're looking beyond that. They're looking, if their movie is a success, they want to participate in the financial success of the film. I'm sorry, I haven't seen any of these films. I mean, I've heard of these movies, but I haven't seen any of them. Nope. It's great that, the, that, that your channel is showing these films. And I, all I would say is that, you know, I want people who subscribe to this service to actually watch these movies. And then they're going to see stuff that they don't normally see. And that's the whole thing. I mean, get out, you know, just get off your, your duff and, and check these out.